So I hate to break it to you, but no one is coming. No one is going to knock on your door, asking you, begging you to pursue your dreams, to follow through on your passions, or to be an artist. So if you're waiting for permission, you may be waiting for a really long time. At least that was my plan until death came knocking at my door twice. Now I call these near-death incidences because I didn't see any bright white lights, nor did I float over my body. But these incidences shook the core, uh, my sense of invincibility. The first one happened while I, while I was in India. I was on a trip visiting my family. We had an unexpected death in the family. And so on the morning of their funeral, my aunt and I got into an auto rickshaw, a standard common mode of transportation in India, and we headed there. However, on our way, a, the auto rickshaw was turning and a car hit us from behind. The auto rickshaw toppled on the side I was sitting on, and so I ended up with a broken arm, broken left arm, two broken fingers on my right hand, a hairline fracture on the left side of my face, and some gashes on my forehead. It was obviously painful. <laughs> so it took about four months for me to recover from this accident. And in the initial days of that recovery period, I was like a 25-year-old baby. My family had to help me do the basic things like eat, um, go to the restroom, to read books because one of my eyes had closed shut from the impact. So I wouldn't wish this upon anyone else, obviously, but looking back, it was actually a blessing in disguise because for me, it was a wake-up call. At that point, I was still figuring it out. I knew what I didn't want to do. I did not want to be a pharmacist. I quit pharmacy school, uh, much to the disappointment of my parents. And I also knew I didn't really want a standard nine to five. I even volunteered uh, in an AmeriCorps program uh, called City Year. So I knew there was something else for me out there. I knew I was a creative person. I just didn't quite know what I wanted to be. Well, truthfully, I wanted to be an artist, but I was still didn't have the courage to own up to it. So I did the next best thing. I started a theater program for kids. I figured if I couldn't be an artist, at the very least, I could help awaken creativity in others. And I loved the creative freedom of running a business. Within four years, I was actually able to be full-time in my business and soon after was making a solid six figures. However, it happened again. This time, I was in Costa Rica, I was on a trip with my friend in uh, Playa Samara. Now you probably would think, don't ever leave America <laughs> based on these stories, but uh, I was you know, at the beach having a great time and I love swimming, okay? So I decided to take a dip in the ocean. Well, what was going to be a fun <laughs> swim ended up becoming a nightmare because I was near the shore one second and completely in the middle of the ocean the next. And so I panicked. I knew or felt rather I was drowning. So I yelled, I screamed and screamed, but my friend, nobody could hear me. Thankfully, I was able to muster, uh, uh, muster up enough strength to swim back to the shore. So physically, I was safe and unharmed. However, deep within, there were cracks. When I got home from that trip, something was off. I was depressed, I was moody, I, I just did not feel like myself. Later on, I spoke to a therapist and she told me that I indeed had symptoms of PTSD, but I didn't know what it was. To me, it felt like a dark night of the soul. I felt very fragmented. I felt as if I was an illusion walking around. I was presenting myself as a CEO, as a teacher, but I didn't feel like myself. And so 
I did something I never thought I was going to do. I let it all go, at least for a while. I handed off my business to two of my staff members. I sold my car. I leased out my apartment. And I went on another trip, <laughs> mind you. Uh, but this time, I got a one-way ticket to Bali. Now, I know that was could have been reckless, and it is also very privileged, <laughs> for sure. However, this trip um, and was a time for me to do a lot of soul searching, and I'm very glad I did it. Uh, at this writer's retreat that I attended in Bali on the last day of that retreat, I was finally able to say out loud that I am an artist in front of 20-something people. And specifically, I wanted to become a professional actor. Up to that point, I hadn't taken it seriously. So I'm happy to report that I can now say I am a professional actor, and I am fully an artist, and I own it. I got my first headshots. I auditioned nonstop. So I was able to do a, a lot of stage and film work. And when I got that first acting check, mind you, probably $100, it made me feel like a million bucks. So I want to say, now, actually, I want to pause for a second, because I also had a dear friend. Uh, her name is Shanita L. Anderson, and she also encouraged me along the way. She held me accountable to my dreams and to this desire to be an actor. Unfortunately, she passed away six years ago from cancer. And she was also an amazing artist and a playwright. She wrote, We Are Punk Rock. So, I am lucky that I had even that one person but if you do not, I know it sounds harsh, but it may be that no one is coming. And I just don't want you to be at death's door and realizing that you have never fully expressed who you are. And so if you're waiting for a permission slip, let this be the one. Thank you. <laughs>